Hey, what's up? So today I want to show you how to make assets for your video game in Affinity Designer. So here I have a video game where you can run around and pick up gold and run away from the ghosts. As you can see, it's, it's very simple and uh, yeah, it has a few, a few assets. It has a player, it has a portal, it has a gold piece. And making these things is surprisingly easy and actually pretty fun. So let's open my Affinity Designer over here. So this is the asset I will show you how to make, inspired by the game Among Us. And also this is a bunch of assets that they have made for my other games. So as you can see, uh, with, with this app, with Affinity Designer, you can just create a bunch of pretty cool looking assets and in a moment you will see how fast and easy it is to do. So uh, yeah, without further ado, let's just create a new document. I'm going to select the resolution of uh, 1920 by 1080. I make sure that document units are set to pixels. That way it's more convenient to do everything. Click create. We have a new document. So this is a Finity Designer and uh, the idea of it is that it's kind of like Adobe Illustrator, but it's uh, more fun, more simple and more easy to use. So it's a vector program. It allows you to create and combine simple shapes. Uh, to create more interesting shapes out of them. Uh, just uh, to make sure that you know the difference between the vector art and the pixel art. So if you take any image made out of pixels, just a regular JPEG or PNG or whatever, this is just like this, uh, the green one is not a, a vector image. It's just a image I've downloaded from Google uh, Google search. So I just found an image and if you zoom into it, you will see that it's made out of pixels and it's just an array of, of pixels that are that have different colors. That's what you usually do in Photoshop and stuff like that. But vectors are different. Uh, vector images, you can zoom into them as much as you want and they will stay infinitely sharp. That's because a vectors are made not out, a vector art is not made out of pixels, it's made out of paths, so-called. So if uh, you look at the shape, uh, this little guy made, uh, made out of uh, different shapes. There is the shape for the light, there is the shape for his body, etc, etc. And each of these shapes is a path. For example, if I'm going to take a vector drawing tool, well, there is this pen tool over here. And I'm going to move on to the empty document just to demonstrate to you. And I will draw some shape, some, some spline like this. I set multiple vertices just by clicking. I, and I can make them sharp like this for right angles. And I can make them smooth if I click and drag to create more organic natural shape. And I can close this path by clicking on the first vertex over here, like so. So this is a vector path. Uh, the cool thing about it is that you can edit it at any point you want. You can move around vertices if you want to adjust it. Uh, you can select the color with which to fill this path. So here we have a color picker. I just pick any color I want. And it, the path is being filled with this color. And uh, you notice these two circles. Uh, this circle represents the fill color. And if you click on this one, it will represent the color of the stroke. So if I pick the color for the stroke, and then I go to the stroke tab and actually enable it, I can create an outline around this path. And I can change the width of the stroke. I can change the type of the stroke. For example, I can make it a dashed line. I can change the types of dashes, etc. So the, the point is that all of the shapes are made out of simple paths and then you add all sorts of effects to them, all sorts of tweaks 
that allow you to create every kind of different art that you want. All right. So now that you understand what's, what paths are, we can move on to the next point, which is combining simple shapes to make interesting shapes out of them. So let me draw a little box over here. Uh, as you can see, it already has the outline and the color applied from before. So I have set the outline and color on the previous shape and it just maintained these settings. And I'm going to draw a circle like, like he over here. As I hover over the edge of the square, it will show me the snapping line, which allows me to snap uh, shapes to each other. If I click shift, uh, it will make sure that it's not a novel, but uh, it's a right circle. Uh, everything gets snapped for me automatically. And I move the circle to the top of the box. To move and rescale things, you just use this uh, move tool. This is just a regular arrow in the top left of this app. So you just move and scale shapes however you want. I'm going to select this box and make it a little bit taller. I'm going to select all of them, make them a little bit smaller. And I'm going to draw a couple of boxes for legs of this guy. So here's one leg. Here's another leg. You can select multiple shapes with shift to rescale them. And let's say I'm pretty happy with these proportions. And I can select all of these shapes and now I can combine these multiple simple shapes into one big shape that looks like this. To do that I have clicked on this button which is called add. Just to explain to you what these buttons do, let's say we have two circles for example. Uh, one red one and one yellow one. Excuse me, uh, yellow one. So if I select these two circles and I click add, they will be combined into one shape. If I click subtract uh, the button next to it, it will subtract one circle from another. So it will just cut out the shape like this. There is also intersect, uh, which uh, will uh, leave only the intersection of these two circles and the two buttons that are used less frequently. So it will cut out the intersection like this and this one. You will just understand how this works by clicking on them and practicing a little bit. It becomes very obvious very quickly. So that's how you combine multiple shapes into a more interesting one. And now you can take the shape and click on this tool, which is called node tool, or you can just press a button on the keyboard and this will allow you to edit the shapes how, however you want. So for example, I can drag on the side of the character like so to make him a little bit fatter. I can select this vertex and here is the button like, uh, okay. So, uh, if you take a look at the vertex, it has, uh, this, uh, thing coming out of it called tangent. That, that looks like this. I can uh, click this button and it will change tangents in a way that makes this vertex smooth and instead of the angular. So it can be angular if you click here and to make a sharp corner or it can be smooth like so. So that's nice. I can move this uh, vertex around and I can make sure that the shape of our character is smooth so that's that's it for editing shapes one more cool tool that you can use is called the corner tool over here press c or this button select a few vertices over here and drag on them to make uh, the shapes rounder which is very useful in many situations same goes for these vertices like so wonderful so now another important concept uh, that you need to understand is that uh, shapes can clip each other. So uh, just to give you an example, I'm going to make a new shape. It's going to be for the lighter color. So, so here I'm trying to make the, the light shape like, like this one over here, the shape of the light. So I'll again create a circle, create a box. 
I will combine them together. I will remove the outline because we don't need it. Here you see the small circle with a, with a line going through it. If you click on it, it will just remove all the color from the stroke, uh, basically disabling it. And now we have two shapes. I'm going to use color picker, so I take this color picker and drag it onto this shape. That will uh, select the red color from this shape. And if I click on this circle now, this, uh, the, the light shape will be identical of the color with this one. And I can also tweak this a little bit to make it a little bit brighter, like so. Maybe like this. And here is the trick. You can take this shape, on the, it's on this layer, and you can drag it on, under this shape, like so. And you can position it however you want, like this. So I'm going to make it kind of a bright red color. And then I will create the parent shape and I will make it a little bit darker so it looks like a shadow. And that's it, we have a little light for our character. Uh, the cool thing is that as you move this shape, as you can see, it's being clipped by its parent shape, which is very good. One more cool thing you can do is you can go to the effects tab and enable Gaussian blur and you can make the shape blurred so that you have the smooth transition between light and darkness. But I'm going to disable it now. I really like the sharp outlines. And basically that's how it works. So that way you can make any kind of assets you want. So for example, I want to make him eyes. I'm going to draw a box like so. It's not going to be on a different layer. I'm going to select the corner tool to select these vertices and make them round. And now we have shape for our eyes. Uh, let's enable the stroke for it, like so, moving it around. Nice, and we will make his eyes blue, like so. Maybe grayish, maybe brighter, like so. There you go. We can duplicate the same shape and make it a little bit smaller uh, for the highlight. So I'm going to remove the outline of, of the highlight and I will make it a little bit brighter, like, like so. See how simple it is? So you just take simple shapes. You can take this highlight and part it under the eye shape, like so, and now it's being clipped. And now you have highlight around his spectacles, or I'm not sure what they are called. There you go, backpack, the same thing. Let's just complete this character quickly. Backpack, use the same color, black outline, corner tool to make it round, there you go, and move it underneath this character. Here in this layer panel you just rearrange layers to make them in correct order so that we want back backpack to be underneath the character's body, there we go. I actually think I want the backpack to be less round, so I'm going to make corners a little bit sharper, like so. Wonderful. There we go. What's left? Uh, we want to, sh uh, to add the light over the backpack and we want to add one more last highlight. So let's copy this highlight once again. I'm actually clicking Ctrl D to duplicate it. You will gradually learn all the shortcuts you need as you practice using this app. Uh, you can just hover over any button and it will show you which button, you, uh, which key, key you need to press to activate this tool or whatever. And uh, we will make it a little bit brighter. And a little bit smaller. There we go. And just to, uh, for some variety, we will use a different tool now. So we will use a pen tool on a new layer. So let's use a pen tool to draw a shadow for the backpack. It will look kind of like this. You can click shift to make uh, lines vertical or horizontal. So I'm just going to draw a shape like this one. Then I'm going to click and drag to make a round, you know, roundish shape 
for this vertex and close this path like so again uh, I'm going to cl uh, click over here to set its fill color to be actually I'm going to pick the bright red color set it brighter and disable the outline so now we have the shape for the light over the backpack and I just drag it over here and parent it underneath the backpack where is it over here so I just drag it underneath the backpack layer uh, when you are using it uh, doing things in practice often you want to name layers correctly that way you know uh, you don't get confused nice so that's in color wonderful so that's our character look at that and uh, it was pretty fast and simple wasn't it and just like you have done this one uh, you can I'm going to tell you to practice picking colors and creating a background and shadow underneath the character actually you know what let's make it together as long as I'm making this video let's just let's select all of the layers we have made together and press ctrl G to group them into one group call it character that way you can move everything together and underneath it we will create a rectangle for our background like so you can make it grayish color actually I'm just gonna pick the color from here to make sure it looks all right so this is the rectangle for the background and let's make another one for the floor make it a bit brighter And we can use a circle shape to draw a shadow underneath our character like this and here we will want to use a Gaussian blur effect to make it a little bit blurrier there we go one more cool tool uh, that uh, you might want to know about is gradient tool so I'm going to click the sky above the character this rectangle and click on the gradient tool it's over here it's actually called fill tool and I can just draw a gradient from the center to the edge of the screen and as you can see it creates a gradient that looks like this I'm going to change its type to radial and now it will be like a light behind the player and I will make the colors a little bit more subtle so over here I can edit the gradient how it looks like I will pick this color and make it just a little bit darker maybe like this So it's just a subtle nice gradient that looks like light around the character like so and it actually makes sense for the ground to be darker than the sky so I'm going to make it a little bit darker like this darker ground and shadow will be even darker there you go I like it So that's it, uh, that's our result, uh, that's our character. Mm, I'm also going to show you other things I have made for my games. So as you can see, it's very simple shapes, you can combine them to make all sorts of cool, pretty stuff. And that makes uh, creating assets for you to do games like so much faster and it's so easy relative to just drawing them or modeling them in 3D or whatever. This is great. Uh, one last thing I want to show you before I go is how to export this stuff over here You can click on this button. It is so-called export persona and When you click on it, it allows you to export different layers separately For example here I click on the layers panel and I can select our character layer and click create slice This will automatically draw a shape uh, a box around the character Which will tell affinity to export this character 
and here on the slices panel you just click export slices and you can select the folder where you want to save them i'm going to save it here click export and if you take a look let me open finder folder one second there we go here is my projects folder I have saved my character over here and you can see that it is saved as an image it's already transparent it's just it's just great and uh, that's it that's all you need to make a, a message for a game now you can just uh, create a new scene drag this character onto your editor like so it will get imported and now in my assets folder i have the character i can drag it, to the, it into the scene and we have a character in our game which i can now control however i want he can run around he can do whatever i wish i think that's really really fun like uh, affinity and godot is such a powerful combination because you can really really quickly create any art that you want and then you can do all sorts of animations in godot and it's very simple and beautiful and fun. So I hope you have found this video useful and I will see you in my future tutorials.